Here we are in Rhino. Let's assume you have completed your 3D model, and then before we export the OBJ file to Blender, we need to organize the model a bit. So we need to select the geometry that's going to be the same material, and then assign them into the same layer. So in this example, I will assign the trees into trees layer, and then the trunks into the same layer. And then the seats into the seat layer. And then the center surface. So this will ensure us to have a smoother transition from Rhino to Blender. And then once we assign them into the respective layer, we can check in the render mode, see all the geometries has a layer, has a color on it. So this will make us easier later to identify them in Blender. And then the next thing we need to be aware of is the model units. So in this example, the unit is already in meters. And then if not, you will need to go to tools, uh, options, and then change the model units from here, from millimeter to meters, because most of the VR platform use meters as the units. And that will make us um, save some time later to adjust the scale. And then once all down, we can select all and then export selected. And then here we choose uh, OBJ file format. And then we will um, keep the default settings and then click OK. And then here we can adjust the detail level of the geometry. Um, so because in this example, there are more curved surface and sphere. So I will keep it slightly above 50% and then click OK. And then this is done in Rhino. So now let's switch over to Blender. And once we open Blender, we will see this uh, interface. And then we can delete the cube first and then import the OBJ file we just exported from Rhino. So once we import the 3D objects, we can see different geometry already has different colors. And then it's because like in Rhino, we organize different geometries into different layers and assign them a colored material. And it will be easier for us to identify in Blender. And then before we start, uh, we can adjust the workspace a little bit. And then personal preference, I will put the shader editor at the bottom. And then the UV editor at the top left corner. And also in Blender, there are different view modes like in Rhino. They, so there are like a wireframe and then different shading mode. And then also the render mode. So we can delete the light first. So in this video, we will cover three quick and easy way to um, texture the 3D model and then the first one will be using Blender's material baking function and then the second one will be use Photoshop to create our own single color image and then to use as the um, texture for the objects and then the last one will be downloading a seamless texture from online and then apply it onto the 3D objects and then adjust the scale so let's start from the material baking method so to demonstrate, we first give the center surface a self-emit material. And then we can adjust the emission color and the emission strength at the shader editor. So now you can see the center surface, it's um, a self-emit material, but the trees is not reflecting or receiving the light. That's because um, at the right side, we need to change the render engine from EV to cycle. So now you can see the lighting effect. And then also, um, now we are going to bake the texture for the tree first. So by pressing Shift L and then choose material, it will select all the same materials geometries all at once. And then we can change the color of the tree from here. 
let's make it green and then to and then to bake the material we need to have a canvas and then to have the canvas we um, go to the shader editor and then add a image texture and then we create a new image and then name it as a tree 1.0 1 and then we will keep the dimension as 1024 times 1024 pixels and then click OK and then go to the UV editor here we choose the tree 1.0 and then this square is the um, 1024 times 1024 pixels canvas for us to bake the color onto it and then now we go to the edit mode and then so we can see the sphere has a lot of uh, surface and then now they are all overlapping on the canvas and then we can use press V and then use smart UV objects and then click OK and then they will lay out the surface of the sphere on the canvas and then we will bake the color and then the lighting effect onto it and then before we start um, we start baking we need to uh, make sure the tree 1.0 is clicked and then go to the right side scroll down to the bake and then here bake type we will choose combine and then untick the indirect and only choose the direct lighting effect and then also we can change the margin size from 16 to 1 so that um, between surfaces um, the, affection bet the effect between each surface will be minimized and then now we can start baking and then before we click uh, make sure again this is um, ticked okay now we bake so now um, the color of the tree the green and then the lighting effect will be baked onto the this square canvas and then now we will wait for it to finish so now the baking process is done and then the texture of the tree now is baked onto the square canvas on the top left corner and then now we need to remember to save the PNG the image save as PNG and then save at your target folder and then so now uh, we are done baking this is the first method and then at the shader editor now we can link the this image texture tab the color output to the base color and then now the color and then the lighting effect will be on the trees geometry and then the next method we are going to show is um, to use Photoshop to create a single color and then we can use the same this image texture tab to link the color onto it so now we can open Photoshop so once the open, oh, Photoshop is open and then we can create a solid color and then choose the color you want and then in this example I will make the seat as a blue color And then the size of this Photoshop file is also 1024 times 1024 pixels. And now we save as a copy. And then um, also PNG and then blue seat save. So now we go back to uh, Blender and then click the seats and then press shift L and then choose all the same material objects so here we will add the image texture and then this time we are not creating a new canvas we will open our own PNG file create in Photoshop so choose blue seats PNG and then open image and then now it's in this tab and then we link the output the color to the base color and then you can see now the color is onto the seat and then if you are curious we can go to the UV editor and see the blue seat PNG 
And then the whole canvas is uh, the PNG file we created from Photoshop. And then we can go to the edit mode and see how different uh, surface are like um, mapped onto the canvas. So this is a reverse way of operating the color, the texture to the geometry in these 3D objects. So uh, now we are going to demonstrate the third method to give texture. So we will use the trunk's geometry as example. And then we click the trunk and then shift L and then click material. All the trunks are selected. And then we also need to add the image texture. And then open the file of the seamless texture you downloaded from online. And then in this example, I have already downloaded some seamless texture from online. And then I will use this PNG as example, the black and white linear pattern. And then so now we click uh, link this output color to the base color. And then we zoom in and then we can see the texture is um, the image is already on this geometry. However, um, the scale might be a little bit too big. And then to adjust the scale, we can go to the shader editor and then add the texture mapping, tap the mapping. And then so they are like uh, the vector scale location you can adjust. And then we need to also create a texture coordinate so we are adjusting the UV and then put, link the UV to the vector and then the output vector to the image. And then now we can adjust the scale at the mapping tab. So from one, we make it to five and then see the outcome. So as you can see, now the linear uh, pattern, the scale looks better on it. So this trick can also apply to other texture you download, for example, the grass or the soil or uh, other fabric pattern. And then so maybe let's also um, give this center surface um, a color. Add the uh, image texture. And then open the file. Okay, so now here we need to create a new color for it. So we go back to Photoshop and then use a pink light and then file save as. A PNG. This will be the pink neon safe and then we go back to blender and then we can open the file we just uh, save from photoshop the pink neon and then open the image and then we connect the color output to the base color and then now we are done so there are three ways of baking and then before we export the all objects we need to make sure um, they are all linked to the image the PNG texture so that uh, when we export the GLB file uh, all the texture will be on the geometries okay all good and then now um, we can export the GLB file format GLTF 2.0 and then choose our target folder and then we will name this as a uh, curve sit final export okay it's done and then to see the outcome we can open the google chrome and then glb viewer and there you have it the texture 3D object model is now ready for use in the VR platform. So you can see the trees, the trunks, and the seats. Uh, they are like 3D 
different ways of giving texture to the geometries in the 3D model. And the workflow from Rhino 3D model to Blender is simple and quick in this way to give a good virtual experience. And I hope you find this tutorial video useful. Please give it a thumbs up and leave any questions or comments down below. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.